It's been exactly a week since BFM lost its top leadership in a fatal plane crash, but members are standing together and moving forward. We have the details of the first service coming up in the Bahamas tonight, the weekend edition. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. It's a weekend edition of The Bahamas Tonight. Good evening, everyone. I'm Charisma Robinson with a look at what's making news. Thanks so much for joining us. Our top Sunday story this Sunday comes from Grand Bahama. Police on that island have once again made a huge discovery on illegal drugs worth millions of dollars. From our Northern Service News Desk, Shashina Roll reports. 13 crooked sacks of marijuana and a suitcase containing harsh oil, totaling $6.2 million. Police say it is the largest compressed drug find in recent time. Now three Grand Bahamians are arrested and police officials say their investigations are continuing. Officer in charge of Grand Bahama, Emmerich Seymour, says it was around 5 on Sunday morning when Drug Enforcement Unit Intelligence led them to the home in Arden Forest. During the, the search of the house, um, they discovered in the southeastern bedroom um, a number of marijuana um, suspected crocus, crocus sacks con containing a suspected marijuana. Um, the crocus sack totaled some 113 in total, 113 total um, of various of various weight, but the total combined weight of the discovery was 5,640 pounds. The top cop says the 5,640 pounds of marijuana has a street value of $5.6 million. But they also found a suitcase that contained 67 pounds of hash oil. Hash oil is considered the most potent of the main cannabis product because of its high level of psychoactive compound per its volume. Seymour says the value of the hash oil discovered is $607,500. Um, this is by far one of the largest arguably well, the, the largest compressed um, drug um, discovery we've had um, here in, in, in Grand Bahama. And of course, I want to commend the officers for, for, for a job well done. Um, it, it lends to the fact that what we know all along, that our intelligence suggests to us, um, you know, drug is traversing the island of Grand Bahama, as you would have heard in, in the case of other parts of the Bahamas. And of course, um, we, were, we, are, we are relentless in our efforts and our pursuit to really um, uncover these drugs and of course bring the perpetrators to justice. A 52-year-old resident along with two other persons were also arrested. But could more persons be involved in this latest find? The investigation is still open and um, um, at the conclusion of the investigation we, we will continue this investigation to see where it leads. But um, it's a possibility. Now Seymour says the men who have been arrested will be flown to the nation's capital to be formally arraigned. As for the drugs, they will also be shipped to Nassau as part of evidence and then destroyed. Shishina Roll, ZNS Network News. Prime Minister Perry Christie told Progressive Liberal Party members to stand firm with the party despite the onslaught of criticism. Mr. Christie rated his government's performance since being elected in May 2012. He told POPs at their annual prayer breakfast that his government is getting the job done and moving the economy forward. Clint Watson reports. The Progressive Liberal Party was elected back in 2012 on the platforms of reducing crime and the economy. Since then, Prime Minister Right Honorable Perry Chrissy says they've worked tirelessly to address the issues. He says in 28 months, the country has come a long way. He says his government has had to make tough decisions. The record will show that my government has not shied away from the challenges confronting us, but has boldly and confidently addressed every major issue confronting this country. When others were ducking and buckling under the pressure, we went ahead resolutely addressing the challenges and making the tough decisions. 
Prime Minister Christie says every day he is reminded that time is precious and not promised, and he works every day to take full advantage of getting the people's job done. Last Sunday's aviation tragedy, he noted, is a reminder to stay the course and focus on doing what he has been commissioned to do for the people of the Bahamas. With that in mind, he urged party members not to become weary in waiting. You worked hard to make us win. You gave us the privilege of governing. This is no time because we haven't come yet with the particular policy you wanted to see to say, oh, i happy. Prime Minister Christie says now is the time to exercise faith and confidence in leadership, particularly as strategies are formed of how to advance the country. We need to know that government entails making the right decisions for the Bahamian people and making those decisions at the time it is required and also making decisions means sacrifices. The challenges are so profound when you're looking for money and every day as the Minister of Finance we have to find money. Mr. Christie says with hope, expectation and anticipation, his administration is poised to provide jobs and new opportunities come 2015. In tomorrow's report, we'll reveal more of the Prime Minister's plans for development and job creation, as well as his response to the immigration issue. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Well, advocacy groups within the Haitian community here in the Bahamas breaking their silence today on how they really feel about this country's newly enforced immigration policy. The groups joined the United Haitian and Bahamian Association at a press conference this afternoon to express their position on comments made by U.S. lawmaker Daphne Campbell and other people of Haitian descent concerning the policy that was implemented on November 1st. While the association made it clear that they do not agree with Campbell's comments to boycott the Bahamas, they do have some major major concerns with the policy when it comes to children born in the Bahamas and the basic rights of individuals. Members of the United Haitian and Bahamian Association met with government last Thursday in light of this country's new immigration policy. Members voiced their concerns and made a number of recommendations. It's not realistic for undocumented persons to become documented over a short period of time, uh, i.e. The, the Embassy of Haiti is unable to carry out the responsibility of issuing passports to Haitians born in the Bahamas because of the workload that they currently have and they're unable to remit passport in a three months period. So realistically, uh, that's highly improbable. That was Robinson Deodane of the United Haitian and Bahamian Association. He and President Anton St. Louis also have a major concern when it comes to the new Belongas permit for children who are born in the Bahamas to foreign parents. The permit is to assist those who have long complained about the time frame to apply for citizenship. Up to now, we do not know if it is yearly or permanent, but it is our prayer that they will stop all of the children who are born here because what when we talk about the children and we do not stop the government. We cannot tell the government not to pick up illegal immigrants. What do we do with those children who have the, the right at the age of 18 to come back to the Bahamas and apply for citizenship? Um, what we are trying to push as Bahamian of Asian descent is that those children, when they reach the age of 18, we want them to be asset to the Bahamas, okay? Where they can feel a sense of belongings. And, we have to create that atmosphere. Now, while the association has a number of concerns, it was clear it fully supports government's new immigration policy. What it does not support, though, are recent comments made by U.S. lawmaker Daphne Campbell. Members claim a number of people have canceled vacations to the Bahamas because of their perception on how government is handling the policy. Science us greatly when we hear the vicious and unfair comments filed against the Bahamas by Ms. Daphne Campbell. Neither Ms. Campbell or Ms. Jetta Baptist reside in the Bahamas, and therefore we do not feel that they have the authority to speak on behalf of Haitians and the people of Haitian descent in this country in the tone and manner in which they have spoken. While they are free to express themselves and share their opinions, we wish to make our position clear that we oppose their suggestions that the Bahamas should be boycotted by Americans and other nationalities via its tourism product. 
Now the association says it will be reaching out to Campbell and Baptiste to give them credible information as to what's been going on. It has also launched an investigation and is seeking to help government remedy the inaccuracies. A new era begins at Bahamas Faith Ministries. That and more when the Bahamas Tonight Weekend Edition returns.